You're watching and listening to Conscious Evolution Media, shifting global consciousness at ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com. Are you in the entertainment industry? If you answered yes and you want to promote yourself, your passion, and profession, check out Creative Independent Artist Magazines at CIAartists.com, endorsed by Kids Talk Foundation Worldwide. Today's podcast is brought to you by Kids Talk Foundation, a global nonprofit organization providing youth advocacy, television programming, and training services in the United States, along with comprehensive medical and educational services for the developing world. Most recently in Kenya, Africa, where Kids Talk Foundation provides a feeding program, medical care, and educational services to over 1,300 young people each day. Please help our youth and place your donation. Go to www.kidstalk.org. Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Show on Real Coaching Radio Network. How would you like to attempt to demystify with us the realms of the mind, body, and soul to bring you a more holistic and balanced way of living? Healthier in all realms of the psyche, the spirit, and the body. Here is your host and executive producer, Coach Steve Toth. Welcome, everybody, to the Mind, Body, and Soul Show on the Conscious Evolution Media Network. And I'm your host, Coach Steve Toth, and I would love to introduce formally our guest today. Her name is Lynn Williams, and she's joining us from somewhere in Orange County, California, right? Actually, I'm in Las Vegas right now. I'm from Southern California, and that is home, but right now I'm hanging out in the desert, so... Um, this is like my second home, so yeah. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. we actually we actually have a show from Las Vegas. Really? We actually have more more than one. <laughs> yeah. It's a great yes. place. A lot of go- a lot of stuff going on here always. Yes, yes, it is. Awesome. So, Lynn is actually a happiness mastery coach, an author, a speaker, and I'm sure many other things. Hmm. But here's here's the question. Lynn, if I took away all those titles and any of the titles that anybody has ever called you by, Mm -hmm. what's left? Who is really a Lynn Williams? Oh, she's a dynamic, uh, happy woman who's gone through some incredible life experiences and come back to a point where what's left is happiness and being glad to be here. And believe me, that's been quite a journey because I wasn't always happy to be here. But um, I'm a spiritual being who recognizes my own power now. I found my own voice, and I'm enjoying where uh, where my life is going and where it is right now. Oh, by the way, I want to say thank you, Steve, for having me on the show. It was a great honor to be invited to share this time with you and your audience. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, and you actually kind of teed up the following question, which is... <laughs> In order for you to be the master that you are today, hmm? you had to go through some stuff, as I say. <laughs> That's Would my favorite be... word, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one or two. Would you be willing to share some of it with the viewers? Because um, I feel that when we share ourselves and being, we're being really authentic and willing to walk the talk, uh, people usually get something of who we really are and who they are for that matter. I totally agree and I, I'm very happy to share uh, because it is who I am. It's why I can do what I do and why um, what brings me joy because of this journey. Uh, now I'm not a young kid anymore. Um, I've been around for a minute uh, and during that time, <laughs> oh, come on. why I have? You look, I, you know, you I look young to me. Well, Thank you so Lynn. much. Um, <laughs> I, I stopped telling people my age because they don't believe me anyway, but just let's, just let's just say my mother's gene pool was wonderful. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, but just to give you a clue, my youngest child is 39 years old, so I've been around for, for a minute. But anyway, um, my journey has been one of highs and lows, which is probably true for everybody, but there was a lot of tragedy along the way, and as I've become uh, this love and happiness mastery coach, I incorporated all of that to bring me to this point of where I am now because I've 
gone through the experience of losing my mother, my father, three sisters, my son, and husband. Uh, I've been through a couple of divorces. I went through the economic downturn. I lost a 33-year uh, information technology career in the middle 2000s. I got uh, I went from owning several properties, six, seven houses, to being broke and renting a room uh, from friends, to being totally broke, being on welfare, skirting homelessness, being depressed, um, you name it. I've pretty much done it. And throughout all of this, I have managed to maintain my health. And I know that, that part of that is because of the practices I do. I've been a metaphysician for about mm, 36, 37 years now, daily meditation and following as many of the principles as I could, you know, to keep me, keep me going. And I've watched a lot of people a lot younger than I am who've gone through a lot less than I have just totally fall apart. And it's not to say that I didn't fall apart at one point, but I was able to use uh, what I knew as well as um, I became an energy healer, a Reiki master, an EF practitioner along the way. Uh, I'm an intuitive psychic, so I do uh, tarot readings and, and other psychic readings. I brought all of this stuff into play when I went into my depression and lost my, uh, my finances, my life, and everything and ended up bottoming out. That's what's brought me back to where I am now. I have, you know, um, I mean, I went from near suicidal to being happy about being here again, and, and it, it's a lot. It, it, it's taken a long time, but I'm, I'm here now, and I'm happy to share what I've learned and experienced. Wow, what a journey. We have, we have some similar stuff in our past. Not that the past is, 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 is that important right now, but uh, I also used to be in the technology business, and then I also used to be in the financial sector and the real estate business and mm. the story goes on so we have a lot a lot of stuff in common but um, what I'm curious about is by the way thank you for sharing that and oh, you're welcome. What, what I'm curious about Lynn is you you talk about I, I have had thousands of women come through this network and I also do a cable television show called the living consciously TV <clears throat> and it seems like uh, in these days and uh, correct me if you're having a different experience but for some reason women have a much easier time and maybe the word easier is not the right word but um, they seem to draw towards uh, becoming awake being awake being conscious and doing this kind of work because men have I would say almost disappeared from the scene mm -hmm. and the reason that I know this is that all these thousands of women that have come through our network they are all want to work with more women and helping them becoming more independent more powerful having them more access to all the things that you're talking about, you know, abundance, prosperity, and the list goes on. And not that there's anything wrong with that in terms of the intent. What I want to say about it, and I really want your opinion, opinion about this, what I want to say about that is men have gone through for thousands of years <laughs> excluding women. And now it seems to me that women are doing the same thing. They're excluding men. No, I don't think we're excluding men, but it's been necessary for us to bond together to pull ourselves to where we are to get that presence, to have our own voice, to have our own power. Um, and so much of, <laughs> so many thoughts are going through my, my mind when you were talking. I was, I hope I can remember to, to make the comments uh, that I really wanted to Yeah, I sometimes have some long questions. <laughs> well, that's okay. Sorry and, about you know, that. I just wanted, there were some very vital points I wanted to bring out. Number one, I want to start with, um, the Dalai Lama said that uh, the, the women, the, especially Western women, are going to be the ones to save the world. Because, you know, one of the things that's happened is the world has changed. Where we were in this male-dominated yeah. society for so very no long. Kidding. 
um, <laughs> we yeah, it, it it's it's changed now so that the divine feminine energy has returned to the planet. That's why you see women rising everywhere, and that's why you see so much uh, attention being paid to us trying to catch up in a way. We have to learn. Um, so many things so fast not only the not only that but the planet itself mother earth herself is accelerated so i mean everybody feels a sense of accelerated time and it's a very real thing it's not our imaginations but it's like everything and everybody's now in this rush to get to a certain point where we should have been long ago if we hadn't been in this state of imbalance so the reason women are doing what we are doing right now is because in, in, intuitively, we understand that if we don't get to the point of being fully present, fully developed, and fully able to handle what's coming, that our world really is going to collapse in, in, in its own, as we call it, stuff, because the male model doesn't work, and it do, it's not working now. And we see it breaking down. We even see a melding. It's not really that we've left men behind. What you're seeing is that, you know, we needed to catch up, so there's all this energy and influence for us no, to no, get no, there. I I, no, I didn't say you left them behind. What I said is that they're being Excluding excluded. Excluding them? Because because all these women that are coming through the network, a lot of them even say, I'm only interested in working with women. I'm not yeah. interested in working with men. But you know why, and I'm going like, uh, I am not exactly sure, other than I think the reason why is because men has a tremendous difficulty handling their emotions. That's the key, right there. And that's yeah. why they excluding themselves, and they rather pretend mm -hmm. behind power and control and money, mm -hmm. as you know. We all been there <laughs> to it's continue to play zone. this game yeah. that doesn't work. But they don't know that yet, you know. And it's yeah. because you know it, it's hard to shift a mindset. I mean, it really for most people it takes a crisis, a disaster, something incredibly revolutionary to break through our belief systems, our patterns, our behaviors. And unfortunately, men are still very much stuck in that place. And I think on some levels, too, they were very frightened. Remember, you know, from our generation, back when we were kids, our the men in, in our uh, lives, our families, our fathers, what have you, were taught to never cry. Men don't cry. Men don't show emotions. Men go out, they do the work, they're, you know, they're warriors, they're this, that, and the other. And a lot of men are still feeling that. So for us, for the women who are coming through all of this transition, we're looking at them saying, I couldn't get you to listen to me <laughs> or cooperate with me all these years. <laughs> I'm not going to waste my time trying to break through the concrete wall now. If you get it, you get it, and we want you to join us, but only when you're open, receptive, and willing because it's just too hard. And even now, um, when we want to approach and deal with women, like even with what I do, I find a very different energy when I'm working with a man. Even when they want to work with me, there's still something of a resistance, still something of a desire to be in control, to kind of um, challenge me. So women are saying, you know what, I've been dealing with that all my life. I don't want to deal with that anymore. And if we're going to make the world a better place and be what it's supposed to be, we'll work with the women who are ready to embrace this, their, their femininity and their power and not, not to control and dominate men at all. It's about bringing balance. And while men are watching all of this globally, they'll start to come around and say, hey, well, maybe this is not as frightening or as crazy as I thought. Maybe they have something. And when that happens, then the balance will start. We'll start to see a balancing of energy and emotions between the sexes. We won't be as threatening to men as we are perceived right now because that's another reason why women are not wanting to deal with it. We're perceived, strong women are still perceived as a grave threat and and it's also one of the reasons wow. why we have so much trouble in our relationships because we're like well we either have to be below you or we have to be alone because to it it's becoming a little more accepted for but for the most part women are still having trouble being able to express themselves make their choices and decisions and be in a happy relationship with a partner uh, I, I talk to women every day I was talking to a lady yesterday who is she's starting a business when she started it, she's trying to make it work, but she's in the process of almost getting a divorce 
she says she's ready to go because her husband won't accept it. He wants her to do things the way he wants her to do it. And so when I, I told her, I said, I went through exactly the same thing with my last relationship and I had to let it go because he was so determined to stop me that he destroyed our relationship and then he died four months later. Um, hmm. And it destroyed me. I mean, it was a mess. It was horrible. And all this happened right before the economy collapsed, which is how I got trapped. But um, I understood some of what was going on with him because I knew him, but he didn't understand me. And my change, the change that happened when I was doing so well and making money and I was happy and having a good time, scared him to death. And so that, you know, and it's happening so, so frequently that um, I feel so bad for couples who are struggling with this because it, we don't want to lose our, our partners. We, you know, we married these men. We want them to be around. So what we're choosing instead is to follow our dream. And in some ways, we don't have a choice because there's like this drive from within because we understand intuitively that this is more than just about us. It's about the world, about our children. Uh, so in a way, we, can't, we couldn't stop it if we wanted to. Right. So... So do you do you feel that resistance that you were speaking of uh, from me? No, but you know you may be enlightened. <laughs> you may have come <laughs> to a point. I mean, seriously oh, I don't... speaking, like I said, there are men out there who are coming to this understanding and who are not intimidated and frightened like they used to be. But generally speaking, men are still resisting it. But there, I I see a lot of men and a lot of women who are in relationships with men who are okay with it. And Lord knows, I'd love to have one. <laughs> you know, I want a partner <laughs> in my life again. I don't want to spend the rest of my life alone. But I decided that when I do have a partner this time it's on a level that he accepts me for who I am that I don't have to shut up when I'm saying something that he's not quite getting that I don't have to hold my energy back to, to not outshine him it's like it's not a competition it's a partnership and very often mm -hmm. men perceive us as competition like they do a business competitor when we start to grow and and uh, shine and become you know who we are uh, and so a lot of women are choosing to stay single while they become who they are so that when they do get in a relationship it's already done and so then they're accepted because they're already there but it's a very it, we walk a chalk line that you would not believe you know in trying to to create this balance of wanting to be loved wanting to be a partner and looking for that man who can accept us for who we are and not be terrified of, of us, you know, and, and not feel like we're trying to compete with him because we're not. That's not who we are. It's not what we want to do. Yeah. So how much time do you spend in Las Vegas? Well, right now I'm here. Uh, I'm living here. I've been here for about six months. Um, part of this journey, <laughs> which is kind of funny, I have to tell you a quick little story about how this all started. Um, when I was doing real estate investing back in the early 2000s, of course, Vegas was booming. And living in Southern California, this was a great, cheaper alternative market. And a lot of Californians were buying properties here. So I came here, um, since it's a quick drive, and who, you know, who doesn't want to go to Vegas? I started coming here and buying properties. And I had several in California. And we bought several here. We actually built a new home that was supposed to be our retirement home. So I was, I ended up in this, like a, what do they call it? Dual residency mm -hmm. because I was a property owner. So when I got divorced, I had a couple of vacant houses here. So I ended up moving here. I stayed here for two years. I went back to California, came back about two years later, went back in 2007 <laughs> and then came back again last year. There is something that has spiritually connected me and anchored me here and I don't know why because Vegas is a very different place than most other cities I've been to um, it seems to be in conflict with my natural spiritual nature on many many levels but I can't seem to stay away from this place it keeps drawing me back so last year um, I got to a point where I needed to move and being in the situation where I was last year um, I hadn't started my active real uh, heavy, you know, uh, serious coaching. I was still working with real estate. And um, this woman called me and offered me a position to be executive direct director of a charity she was running. And the um, I got a, a chance to have a big two-bedroom, over a thousand square foot apartment for 
half of what it would cost. No, maybe even a third of what the same place would cost in Southern California. Um, and it was a great opportunity to run a charity and work with kids and be a mentor and, and put, you know, work with my platform and everything. So I jumped at the chance to do it. Well, three weeks after I got here, she changed her mind about a lot of things. In fact, charity's not even really uh, active right now. But all that went away. But I found myself once again in Vegas. And so I decided, you know what? Spirit has a reason for me to be here. So rather than resisting it, I'm going to embrace it and see where this leads me. And believe it or not, once I got here in my place and the energy is so wonderful and I don't have roommates and the struggle is so much less, things really started to move. So this is part of the platform that I'm teaching in my um, Master Keys to Happiness is that a lot of what makes us unhappy is our resistance to the flow of what the universe mm-hmm. has in store for us and the seven essential laws or principles that govern the, the universe. And so once I started understanding this and being in this place by myself, I, I went really, really deep. I had no distractions. It was a great spiritual experience. I, I can't begin to tell you the things that have happened since I've been here uh, with me spiritually and how mm-hmm. much I've grown, mm-hmm. but it turned out to be a big blessing in disguise. Well, that's very interesting. So, huge blessing. The good news is that we are being featured on Block TV, and that means anybody that comes to BlockTV.com, we're on the first page. Oh, so, wonderful! So let's uh, let's make it worthwhile. Okay. Uh, I think we have some people in the chat room as well there, uh, and I think um, I want to say hi to Dr. Carell. Oh, Zad. that's a friend of mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Big Zed and um, whoever else is there. Not everybody comes into the chat rooms. You know, it's uh, it's just this whole concept of communication and interaction is very very interesting because the reason why we started our network nine years ago for this specific reason is to help people to be able to express themselves because I, I I feel that. A big challenge humanity has is that, and this is true for men, more so than for women, <laughs> is that they don't talk. They yeah. don't express what they feel. But other than that, what I am very curious about, of course, I I told you that I have one of our hosts. Her name is Nina Andivar de Rosa. She moved from Southern California, from Beverly Hills. Same reasons, similar reasons you have. She also, it's, it's interesting how parallel some of our lives are. And the reason I'm explaining this is this fascinates me, is that she's been living in Las Vegas for about a year. I have uh, visited her several times and I, and I got the energy of Las Vegas. I mean, it's a very interesting town. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is very it is very vibrant, but I feel that a lot of people are vibrating at a very low energy mm-hmm. because of the mm-hmm. gambling. Mm-hmm. It seems that everything in Las Vegas is about money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very superficial. You know, and it's funny that you say that because as I mentioned, you know, it's a very uh, interesting place and I... Um, It took a while for me to understand why I need to be here, and it's not to come here and revolutionize or change the place or anything like that, but um, it just, it didn't seem like a natural fit. In fact, I resisted it for about six months. There were several indications or opportunities or invitations even from a couple of friends. Why don't you come and stay here and this, that, and the other? And I kept saying, no, I don't want to live in Vegas. In fact, when I left in 2007, my my deal was, see ya. <laughs> you know, I'm out of here. I'm not coming back unless it's for a weekend vacation. But um, here I am again. And it was, um, I think maybe on some levels, <clears throat> excuse me, the reasons that many of us, because it seems to have a polarity, and, you know, it's one of the laws of the universe is the thing about polarity, a balance. And there's the the superficial sin city consciousness, if you will, if that name fits on various levels. And then, there, on the other hand, there are a lot of churches here, and there are also a lot of the people who live here who are very spiritual, at least in 
in the way they practice, you know, the traditional religions or what have you. And then there is this metaphysical uh, component. So I'm kind of thinking that what Spirit may be doing is bringing a lot of us here, not so that we can actively go out and change anything, but that our spiritual presence is strong enough to start changing things on that level. I talk to a lot of my um, um, psychic clients when I read for them, and they'll ask me about, well, how do I change this, or how do I make so-and-so do that? And I tell them all the time, you can't do it from the you outside. Don't. Everything <laughs> has to work from the inside. You start working. Yeah. I give them affirmations. I give them little meditations. I make recommendations of things to do. And I constantly, constantly tell them, you know, start spiritually grounding yourself. Meditate. Do yoga. Pray. Whatever you need to do. Start working from within. You will see changes happening, especially where there's conflict that seems insurmountable. Don't work up front. Don't compete. Don't try to solve it from out there. You start working on the inside, and what will happen is things will change magically around you, and you'll notice the shifts in relationships. And so I'm thinking that for many of us, we are being brought here to be this subtle catalyst underneath the surface that works on a spiritual level by, you know, light workers basically just bringing light to a place that carries a lot of darkness that eventually starts to, you know, to, to dispel the darkness and more and more and more. Because uh, other than that, I can't imagine why I'm here. <laughs> this is not where <laughs> I want to be. It was not my choice. But once I gave in to the urging and the direction um, and, and went ahead and embraced it, like I said, it's been a blessing. I really can't complain. I, I look at it now and go, wow, who knew? Yeah, yeah who well, knew? since we are all energy, I believe that... Um Yes, you are affecting uh, the energy in um, Las Vegas, and, and thank you for being there, and thank you for for uh, doing what you do on a moments to moments basis. Because the, <laughs> the place is um, it needs it, <laughs> you know, it, it it needs it, and it's completely mm. out of balance. Yeah, and uh, yes. Big Z in the chat room wanted to know what about aliens, and the reason and the reason <laughs> I'm bringing that up is. The way I usually like to respond to that is, who do you think we are? Uh-huh. You know what my response is? <laughs> Even if you are the most logical scientist, and it's funny because I was thinking about that this morning. If you take, and you and I are both computer people, if you take a computer and run an algorithm through it saying, what are the chances that this one little tiny planet in the backwater area of a giant galaxy in a universe with billions of galaxies and stars, what's the odds that there's only one planet with intelligent life? And a, a universe that is billions of years old, so oh, we can't count. You know, we don't know how old it is. What's the chance that only one little planet developed a life form that's only as developed as we are? Come on. Yeah, well, and that's what I so, say. Is oh, if you yeah. want to know about aliens, all you have to do is go to the mirror and look. Well, not only that, but I do believe I no, no this is going no, I'm not going to say it sounds crazy because we do have more and more evidence that it's true. I know that the, uh, that there are other beings here on this planet already, and you know they're not the ones that are here to invade the planet and destroy the world, but they're here uh, to help us. I remember way back in the I guess it was in the '60s. You know, it was we had this sudden leap of tech technology in the '50s. I mean, plastic showed up, aluminum foil showed up, mylar showed up. Um, there was this leap in the technology that created computers. There were several things that happened within a decade that just didn't quite fit where we were the previous decades before or the, the, the uh, pace of our advancement. And so, you know, when you look at that based on when some of these sightings, we've always had them, but when they really got to be pretty active and, and noticeable, all of that tended to show up around the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you know. So my, my mm -hmm. thing was there's no way that we could have made some of the leaps in technology in, in medicine and health and science and technology. No way we could have made some of those leaps without assistance. No way. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, yeah. A lot of it is not our technology. I agree. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. um, you know, the government doesn't want to talk about it. And, I, you know, we all know that, you it's know, they know all this stuff. Time. <laughs> Orson Welles showed us why. <laughs> All he did was a radio show and panicked half the country. So, unfortunately, a lot of us are still in that that mentality. You know that on the edge of panic all the time mentality. And you know America's so well armed. I can't blame 
the uh, the beings from not revealing themselves. I mean, sometimes, like living here in Vegas, I'm an American, and walking out on the streets of Vegas is putting your life in your hands. Kind of like um, they look at us and see probably close to madness, you know, something that looks like madness. And it certainly would not be behoove them to step out and say, hey, I'm from so-and-so planet, and think that that, may, and that they wouldn't be assaulted, and maybe, if, if not killed, certainly, you know, grabbed and taken into a science lab and analyzed. Uh, if I were them, I wouldn't say anything either, at least not yet. But I believe the time yeah. is coming. Yeah, I think the time is coming when, when subtly and easily. I've been seeing things on TV and, and reading certain reports. And from some of my mentors, some of my mentors are physical. And, and you know, I, like I said, I'm also um, a psychic, so I have other information coming in. But I've, I've watched it over the last 10 years, and I, I see very strong evidence that we are getting very close to some of this information being revealed. And uh, it's going to rattle some cages. But, you know... If they don't say anything, it just slows our progress. We really need to get yeah, over it ourselves and move on. Yeah, <laughs> let's connect this to something that I think it's going to make sense to a lot of folks. And what I'm talking about is if, if you look out there in the world, most human beings are operating as a machine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what what I mean by that is, is there is this... There's a period when we are born, and I just had a, another grandson, oh, and I was there when he was born, and I, and I really get it, how pure we are, and how beautiful we are, and how spiritual, what a beautiful being, a baby, when a baby is being born, mm-hmm. okay? And then, we put the baby through the... Our teachings Mm -hmm. like what we know like you know all this stuff that we know (laughs) that's just data for the for the next seven years the baby is gonna grow up and his or her mind is gonna be filled with information right Mm -hmm. now is isn't that like what we do with a computer well it's absolutely the same thing I mean if Computers are actually modeled on the way the brain works anyway. Um, if you look at the brain, uh, the structure of the brain, you know, it's a bunch of circuits that connect and talk and flip mm-hmm. switches off and on. Mm-hmm. Um, and the brain works um, pretty much the same way. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get into IT back in the early, well, the early 60s? When did I get it? Late 60s, early 70s. Um, and so it was really in the early stages. Yeah, early of- 70s for me. Yeah, it was. I believe it was seventy one when I started, and so there I, was a. Lot of- I I had one of the first Apple computers. Oh really? <laughs> uh, I started before there was even the concept of a PC. When I started, the IBM, the biggest computer they the had available was sixty four K. That's the whole machine, yeah. <laughs> and it took up a whole room. And you know, and so I mean, it was. And I, we had I, punch I, cards. Come. Yes, we did punch yeah. cards, and um, mm-hmm. it, it was incredibly. Um, we thought it was such a big thing because we had this power, powerful computer that could do all this processing. But when you consider the whole machine contains 64K, 64,000 bytes of usable information, and 8,000 of that was the operating system. And then there were other you know, components. Basically, all you had to work with was about 32,000K, and that was for your programs and, and everything that happened. I mean, now you get more than that in a wrist, wristwatch. So um, we've come a long way. But... Um, the brain and the way we think and the way it works, we're nothing more than biological computers. We've got this central processing unit called the brain that sends messages to our voice, which is like a speaker. It sends messages to our muscles, you know, um, which do various functions to allow us to move. But it, we are this dynamic living structure, construction of nature that instead of being made out of, of component parts of metal and other you know plastics and what have you, we're made out of DNA and spiritual energy. I mean, everything is energy, even the computers are, but we're made out of biological material of an ingenious design. And so when you look at a computer, it basically was just a, a mechanical model of our brains and, and the mm-hmm. way it works. 
having been in the industry for so long, I understand all of that. And so um, I I've very often said I wish I could plug my brain into something and dump it. Sometimes I wouldn't have to try to remember everything, <laughs> you know, because... Um, yes. and, and I also, you know, it's funny, though, that I mentioned that, though, because I do tell my clients sometimes when they're overwhelmed and confused, I said, you know what, do brain dump. Sit down and write everything you're concerned about, worried about, afraid of on a piece of paper. Just brain so, dump. So, Lynn, you, you're not easy to manage once mm. you get going. Yes. It's like a freight train. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> yesterday, I said, don't worry. So, <laughs> I so I'm not going to get out of the way. Okay. So here's, here's the thing. There are several good questions. Okay. in the chat so we're gonna to get to that in just a moment but before we do I, I want to make sure that we complete this loop about what we talked about which is first seven years the baby is being programmed so if anybody has seen the movie matrix oh, yes. um, I actually spent 20 years in the same organization that those two brothers uh, have got most of the ideas uh, for the for the matrix uh, okay. trilogy and what's interesting is that we kind of on an automatic pilot, and this is connected to what our network is all about, the Conscious Evolution Media, is that we we on this journey of becoming unconscious for a long time, mm -hmm. and then it's up to us to unlock mm -hmm. the key. Mm -hmm to becoming awake and becoming conscious again and figure out what is it about our life that what is our purpose and why did we come here and what is it that lights up our lives you're talking about happiness mm -hmm. and your and your coaching and I don't feel that happiness the access to happiness is 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 really available until we become awake and we become conscious when we remember where we came from and who we really are until then it's just like falling in love and doing all that stuff we do when we're unconscious I feel that's a program mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that Even we have to fulfill. In love is the, program. the way we fall in love is programmed into us. Yes, and it's, it's all programmed. In, it's, yes. it's incorrect the way we do it. Uh, yes. You know, as you were talking about the children, if you look at a, a, a child um, and the way they express joy and delight in the smallest things, I mean, you to Christmas, you buy kids expensive gris, Christmas gifts and they end up playing with the boxes for the next two days because the toys are too complicated. They get delight in the simplicity of life and that joyous feeling of being on the planet. When by the time they are okay, seven... Okay, hang on for a second. So, so I got to say this. So I actually feel when we fall in love, like when we're unconscious, mm -hmm. we fall in love with ourselves, not with the other person. Interesting. It it's a reminder it's an access to who we really are mm -hmm. we are being pinged uh, you know that term <laughs> yes. in technology we yes. are being pinged and says hey remember this is all about you not about the other person we think it's about the other person I it's impossible for us to feel what somebody else feels. It's impossible. You know, you're right. That's a, a different perspective of it. And I think the people who fall in love and who are, who, are, who are successful at it, for lack of a better word, who are able to fall in love with the right person, may do it that way. But for most people, they don't. They fall in love with the idea of who they think the other person is. And yes, then when which is themselves. Find, yeah, and, and but it's not even a reflection of themselves, and it may have to do with the fact that at most, for most of our adult lives, we don't know who we are, which is probably the reason why we choose such inappropriate partners. Um, mm -hmm. 
But it seems to me that, you know, children are awake up until a point where we teach them to become unconscious when they're growing into their later teen, um, later childhood and teen years. I think that's why they rebel so, so uh, incredibly because it doesn't feel natural to them. They see us betraying and lying and playing games and all that, and they become very confused and conflicted because it's not at all what they remember from when they were source, when they were part of source. And we, we programmed them that out of them and then we dump them into the world as adults who are basically insane they've been programmed into being unconscious and crazy and so now mm -hmm. we're running through the world afraid of our shadows and everything else and confused and controlled by a privileged few and all this madness is going on one of my mentors uh, the, the man who introduced me to metaphysics uh, Dr. Masters who Car Dr. Carell and I uh, studied under him he in some of his messages used to say he told the story about Jesus when he he was out in the wilderness and talking to the devil and although you know that's another whole story but just for the to relate the story talking to the devil about um, the devil was trying to tempt him to give him power so he could control the world and what have you and he you know the devil told him he said well you know I can give you all this power you can have riches and everything you could easily control these people look at them they're all crazy they're all insane and I remembered that message that statement because when I look at the world and I see some of the things that are going on it's a really good definition of what insanity is number one like Einstein says doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result run crazy rampant doing things that don't make sense and then when they get in trouble you say well why'd you do that i don't know you know okay so, lynn okay lynn hold on yeah test question okay okay so who do you think on the planet knows best how to control the messes we do if who all is, is to control who is we us we can only control ourselves, and I believe, my belief is But that I'm talking about the masses, not you the masses, or me. I don't know mm -hmm. that there is one person on the world that knows best for how to control the masses. Cause I there's have a, a whole industry that knows how. More what, than one industry. What is that? I'm, I'm not following you. Hollywood is one. Well, they don't know best. Now, they, I, I agree they know how to control, but I don't think they know best. Well, maybe I misunderstood what you're saying. You mean who's who's the best at controlling the world? No, that makes sense. Yes, Hollywood, the media in general. Well, the, the media in general. Yes. Uh huh. The pharmaceutical industry is great at it. Uh yes. They become <laughs> they become experts because they 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 the politicians medicine out are great of at it and put it in our hands. Well, the politicians. Politicians. Are, because, yeah, of course they are mm -hmm. because they have the power. And of guess what? What religion. Yes. It's fantastic at it. Yes, it's still politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just no politics. It's just in the name of the Lord, you know, if you will, if you think about it, it's still basically politics. Um, but, yeah, it, when you put it that way, yeah, they know best how to control the masses, but they don't know best. So they, yeah, no, I didn't mean, I didn't mean that they know best. I mean, I have no idea what's best if I, if I did. I would but, be you know, lying. that was a subtle overtaking of the planet, but now they're so firmly entrenched what we, you know, we have to do so much to change it. And the masses are so programmed, they don't even want it to change, really, because they don't know anything different. It would be kind of like what we were talking about earlier about men and their emotions and connecting with women the way that we are connecting with the planet, or connecting with the planet the way women are. Um, it's an unfamiliar, unexplored territory, and if you take that that dominance, that control, that way, that model of being away, it's stepping out of the comfort zone and into the unknown. And we're not quite ready for all of that in mass. It's got to be a subtle process. That is already in process. It's happening. It's just going to take a while. It's taking. Yeah, I call take... that uh, confusion, manipulation, fear, and force. Mm -hmm. Those are the qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so let's get back with our viewers a little bit okay okay because this is an interactive show so let me let me share some of the comments that are in the chat room and okay. we have had some good ones all right so for starters I think um, uh, what do you think this is from Big Zed what do you think of conscious being connected in terms of being universal all beings are based in this. 
conscious being okay. being connected I, I guess well, what he's saying universal consciousness okay. I say yes yes um, everything is energy and everything is made of the universal source stuff as we call it substance uh, okay, no... I, I gotta I gotta move quickly, Lynn, if we're gonna okay. do this. Okay. So I need you to control yourself. Okay. <laughs> no problem. No. But I just I agree. I mean, there is nothing else but yes. universal stuff. Okay. So, Lynn Williams, do you have a show? They yes. want to know if you have a show. <laughs> if I'm uh, up, yes, I do. A radio. You need show. to have a show on our network, by the way. I'd love. They to. They love you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, good. That's great to know. Thank okay. you. Uh, Smoglog said, David Icke has been comparing computers to people for a long time. Very true. Actually, David Icke has been on our network before. Oh, He's really? something else. He, you know, back in the days, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was made out to be a very bad person. And now it completely switched. And all the things that he's been talking about are people are starting to listen to. Wow, I heard so David I Icke on him. Yes, interesting. Is 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 the man one wow. of them. All right, so here's another one. Uh, let me know I'm interested in in your take on relationships. So they're interested in you talking about how do you take on relationships. Let's talk <laughs> about that for a minute. What is it about relationships? Who, who asked it? I don't know. That's funny matter. because that's one of the workshops that I'm still putting together. I'm working <clears> with <throat> happiness because I feel like happiness pre needs to precede getting into relationships because unless we're happy with us, it's hard to get in a relationship and be happy. So that one is one that I'm I'm looking at putting together for the summer. So I don't have the workshop for relationships. But let's start with the master keys to happiness so we can all get happy with ourselves. And then it'll be much easier to find that partner we can be happy with. Not happy because of, but happy with. Yeah, I think, I think you got it. And uh, like most things. <laughs> so people need to stop chasing mm -hmm. after other people because it's not mm -hmm. about that. Right. It's, it's about chase, chase yourself. Go inside. Is what Become I Become the change you want. Get clear. In your life. Yes. 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 Who yes. said that? I did. <laughs> so, not in the world, because a lot of people say become the change you want to see in the world. I say become the change you want to see in your life, because that automatically will change the yes. world. So, yeah, yes. start with you, work on you. It's a full time job. <laughs> yeah, stop worrying about another girl, another guy, another woman, another man, whatever. Focus on yourself. Because that's what Lynn had to do. That's what I had to do. Yes. It's the it's the only way. I'm still not chasing because I think my partner, if I'm supposed to have one, that will just unfold. Well, you know, based on who I who, who I am being in the world. Because if you're happy, people automatically want to be around you because they want some of that. You know, so yeah. learning to be happy from within means that you're radiating it wherever you go, whatever you do, it's coming through. So that to me is key number one. Let's start there, and then the rest will kind of, you know, fall into place. You know. All right, let's see what else. Is she a regular on your show? <laughs> no, she's not, but she needs to be. <laughs> I'm, I'm game. I'm open. You know. I mean, um, it's all about getting the message out there and I'm looking for channels to do that so we can talk about that. That's the name of my show. Yeah, and, my show anyways. We can talk about that. I, as you say, I love to talk. <laughs> yeah, and then Smoglog said, falling in love has pain. Pain is not real. So our concept of love is not real. But real love is the only truth. Yes, and what is real love? I don't think love hurts. I mean, there are things that happen because we have... If know, it hurts, it's not love. Exactly, and that's what I tell people all the time. If you're in pain in love, you got a problem. You misunderstand. <laughs> um, being real love does not hurt people who really love each other. And you know what the thing is? If you love yourself enough, you won't do to someone else what you don't want done to you, and that automatically elim eliminates the pain. It's about loving yourself enough 
to love someone else because you respect who they are as well. And that's where we start. That's why people generally in relationships hurt each other because they're striking out because they're angry, they're mad, they're you know resentful. And it's not about love. It's about um, getting back. It's about paying back. Yes. It's about you know, yes. doing someone else. Because what do we do when, we, when we're not being conscious? We hurt the ones that are the closest to us, right? Because they're the only ones who will take it. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And it's that's an ego in play. That's not you. That's not the true mm -hmm. you. It's the ego that when you're hurting someone or doing something like that, check yourself because your ego is, is in control and you are not. Okay. Dr. Carell is getting into the equation here. So is hurt not growth is the question. Well, it depends on the definition of hurt. Um, I I think there are, there's and it it may all be about languaging. Um, there's experiencing and there's challenging experiences. And of course, we do better when we are challenged as far as learning. But I kind of call it like going to school. You know, you're in school, you're learning your lessons, you're studying. It's burning new brain paths, and it's hard. It's challenging. But then there's recess. And there's summer vacation, you know, and all that time when it's just about the, the fun of the experience. So I don't think hurt is necessarily the definition. I think we need to read. And if we were vibrating and being who we really are authentically, it wouldn't be about hurt. It would be about experiencing the challenges that life presents us so that we can learn and grow. But that's not about hurting each other, like lying well, and betraying and stuff like that. I, I don't even think, Lynn, hurt is real. It's a concept. Well, I tell you, it's hard to say it's a that construct. when you have, yeah, it's a construct. when you have some of those experiences where it, you know, where you've got the physical sensation that goes along with what we call hurt, and, and like I said, it may be a matter of languaging, but there are things, you know, and it's mostly resistance. You know, it really comes down to when we're hurting, when something is hurting, like our bodies hurt or whatever, it's because something is out of balance. There's resistance to something. Whether it's change, a better diet, exercise, whatever the case is, there's something going on that is trying to urge us to grow. So, and I think when you get to a place of happiness within, you have a lot less of those experiences because you don't resist as much. So let's just put it that way, because we're running out of time. Because <laughs> that's a Are deep we? discussion. Is well, time even real? For... <laughs> Unless you want to keep going, well, no, I, you know, because I I have a a, a client after uh, right after two, so, but yeah, okay, I just well, we think can, that we can finish now if you want, but we still have nine minutes based on my clock. Well, so let's go with it. I mean, I'm I'm okay with that, uh, but I just didn't want to get too deep into that discussion because I think that can take the <laughs> part of another hour because of um, what I believe hurt really is and and what I think um, happens when we feel it. You know, there's, we can hurt ourselves and we can hurt other people, but that goes, like I said, to resistance and struggle and experiencing. When you change your perspective of what all that is about, you can accelerate the process and find the blessing, and it goes faster, it hurts less, and you can move on. That's yeah, a big the lesson that's hurting, I learned. <laughs> who's the one that's hurting? Well, it, it's the person that's having the experience. And if we, when we, now, who's that? That's us. It's us. Who's us? That being that lives inside that's this biological construct that who's we that? are. Well, it's spirit because we are all we are all spirit. We are into we are individual expressions of spirit. spirit well, I disagree. I respectfully disagree for once on the show. Okay. See, our heart when we live our lives from our heart, mm -hmm. there is no hurt. The only time there is hurt when we give the key to the ego, well, kind of then, what I was saying then there is hurt nonstop. But the ego is a construct as well. It's 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 the energy that we decided to present to the world for whatever reason. You know, however, um, I call the ego the little kid. You know, that's that inner child. And when you let your kids outside, they go play, they get in fights, they do all kinds of crazy things. Then they come back, running back to the parent, you know, hiding behind me. Please protect me. Please save me. I'm in trouble. And so I look at the inner spirit, the part of us that's authentically spirit. That's the adult. And we let our little egos out to play. And when we go out to play, we do kind of all kinds of crazy things and get in trouble. And then we come running back as spirit. 
to save us, you know, to get us out of this spine. And that's where the pain comes in when that, that, that ego, if you will, has done something that's in resistance to what its parent has told it it should do or should not do. Usually when we yeah, experience the, pain, it's because we violated something we know better. Well, I think, I think that's partially accurate okay. that it's the kid in us. But the ego has a real purpose. Yes, it does. I, I'm no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But I still think it actually which, acts which more is like a kid than an adult. It, I believe, to me, in my opinion, our ego is there for us to create the conditions and the circumstances under which we will have the experiencing, to serve the purpose we are in in the world. Um, because I don't think that's I don't think that's the ego. That's our spirit. Uh, I think it's to me the ego is the is what we show to the world. It's the physical part or the physical expression of our spirit. Our spirits to me is something that's pure of intention and desire and design. And if we were truly living from that spiritual place, now we have an ego. Everybody has to have one because that's our personality. But I do believe that our expressions of that ego has to do with what we are within, who our spirit, what whether we're living from our hearts, from that spiritual place. Um, okay, what if, what if I said that that's part of the design of mm -hmm. this machine, that mm -hmm. the ego was put in place mm -hmm. to make sure that we survive every moment? It's part of it. Mom moment to moment. But my ego is also the one that said I needed to put on makeup and comb my hair and dress up and put on jewelry to be on this show as opposed to the way I looked yesterday when we were doing the test. <laughs> 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 You know, so it's kind of like, yeah, it's all of that. And in, in many ways, it's more. I mean, it. Um, some people live totally from their egos. Uh, most of us live, you know, as a combination of who we are internally and our egos. But, yeah, uh, you know, there are times I go out without makeup, but then on this show, my ego said, no, not this time. <laughs> You're going to look good. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's all of that and more and more. Yeah, do you know how many... How many people I have come through this network that their picture looks like when they were 25 mm -hmm. and when I actually talk to them, they're in their 50s or 60s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already told everything who about are they? Who are they trying to fool? Well, you know... Um, I, I, and I don't know because I see some of those pictures too and I look like the picture that I sent you is from is about eight years ago that picture was taken quite frankly that picture was taken the day after my ex and I separated and I was I was a mess that's another whole story to tell you what that that picture came from but the photographer was tremendous but I looked at that <laughs> she was I mean it I looked like that I really did but I mean she Lena, still, I see her beauty and I see it thank inside you. Well, I've been fortunate. Don't, like I don't, said, worry, when, don't worry about your external beauty, I would say. Thank I you. see your beauty. But I, if my picture, my physical appearance changes so much that I don't look like my picture anymore, I'm going to take new pictures. Now, I'm very blessed. <laughs> But um, I just, you know, I do, I want to present my best face to the world because unfortunately, even though I'm comfortable totally without makeup, the rest of the world perceives me differently. And there's, in, there's statistics to prove this. You know, it affects my credibility in the world when I don't do what's expected of, to me, of me. And so it's not just about my ego. It's also recognizing I'm in a business. And I mean, even though we're doing all this talk about spirituality, I'm in a business and I'm looking for clients and I want to promote my business. So I recognize what people need to see in order for them to trust me and want to work with me. And, you know, it's, a, it, it's the way our world is. It's, it's where we are right now. So... Um, you know, I work within cons the constraints of, of our consciousness, and this is part of what it is. Fortunately, I so, have good foundations to work with. <laughs> so would you call that group consciousness? Yes. I call it more the race consciousness than just group. Mm -hmm. it, it goes way beyond just a group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interesting. Okay. So we're coming to the end of the show, believe it or not. So would you like to share your website or any of the information you would like to share with our this, this is going to be put on YouTube and it's going to be podcasted all over the place including iTunes terrific um, my website is thewomanexec.com that's T-H-E-W-O-M-A-N-E-X 
E-C.com, the woman exec dot com and I'm uh, going to be starting a new workshop the master keys to happiness on March the 20th it's the spring semester and um, I would in I'm inviting all of you to go to my website you can enroll there you can ask me questions um, I look forward to sharing more information about being happy because if we can get to a state of happiness from within imagine what that would be like in the world to live with a bunch of people who just love being here thank you and uh... We will be back, of course, uh, next week, same place, same time, Mind, Body, and Soul Show on Conscious Evolution Media Network, always at 2 o'clock Mountain and 4 p.m. Eastern and 1 p.m. Pacific. Thank you all. I love you, and see you next week. Bye, Bye, -bye. for now. Today's podcast is brought to you by ObesityHotline.com, the silent killer, providing support and encouragement in the prevention of this rising epidemic. Featuring the Body by Vi Challenge, is there a quick answer to the question? Go to www.ObesityHotline.com. You're watching and listening to Conscious Evolution Media, shifting global consciousness at ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com.